first thing you're going to want to do when you get the bottle is go on ahead and inspect it to make sure there's no big gouges or damage to the interior or to the exterior components and the fiberglass and that the fibers of the um, Kevlar uh, wrap is not protruding out. The next thing you're going to want to do is look at the hydrostatic date to make sure it's within hydro so that you're able to go on ahead and to conduct the uh, fill. If it's out of hydro, you can't fill it. Right here is the initial date, 10 of 2006. This was the hydro, it was 2 of uh, 2011. Serial number is always going to be an OK, and it'll be an 18, 7, 4, 0, 5, or it'll be a 45 series number. And the rest of this is just telling you that this is a 4500 U.S. Department of Transportation. It's a 4500 PSI cylinder, pressurized cylinder. After you clean it and it dries, what you're going to want to do is bring it over here and set it in one of these glass container chambers. And then go ahead. and screw in your fill hose. Now these are high pressure fill hoses. So they'll go up to, they're rated for 5,500 PSI. Anything over that, they may burst. There. This is a bleeder. You wanna make sure your bleeder is in the off position now open your tank and you'll hear it hiss. All right, that's filling air throughout the hose and going back up to the regulator and coming to the fill station gauge. Now with anything else, you always start with your lowest pressure first when you're going to fill. So bank number two is at 4,000. So what we're going to want to do is open bank two You'll hear it, a little air going there. Now, we need to go on ahead and set our pressure regulator. So go on ahead and turn down the pressure regulator. And the pressure regulator will set at 4,000. All right, now, if you're gonna go on ahead and fill, you just crack this very, very slight. You only want 200 PSI per minute to go in there. And what that does is to keep this from getting hot fill and expansion. So you get a smooth, even fill. Okay, now, go on ahead and shut the blast. Then we'll pressurize the cylinder. You hear it? And it'll fill to whatever the pressure is set here. We're filling slow so we don't cause any... Uh, uh, heat, you know, transfer when the, when the air is going in there for the expansion contraction. You can still hear it going in. Hear it? All right. Now, it's subsided. You want to go on ahead and shut your fill valve off first. Then shut off bank two. Then go to your next highest bank. All right, the next highest bank would be number one. And you can see it's over 4,500 PSI. So that will finish topping off that cylinder. You hear it going in? Okay, now we check our regulator pressure. We're below 45. All we gotta do is give it a couple of turns and put it right at 45. A bit more. Now listen. You hear it filling slow? There it goes. Now if you want to check and make sure your cylinder's not overheating, you can stop the whole operation by opening the blast uh, chamber. And when you do that, that shuts everything off. It puts it in a suspended animation mode. So no air is going in and no air will come out. And you can come over here and you can feel your, feel your cylinder 
Make sure it's not too hot. Plus check your gauge. Check your bottle gauge with the gauge that's registering on this machine to make sure they're within 100 PSI's of each other. And if one's over 200 PSI, then we're gonna have to shut down the operation because either your bottle gauge is malfunctioning or the machine gauge is malfunctioning. But the way to test that is you'll have two gauges here. You'll have the fill gauge coming from the regulator and then you'll also have the pressure gauge going to the cylinder. So, you know, they'll, they'll be a pretty good indicator there. So it'll probably be the bottle. Okay, now we'll finish filling. Now listen when we shut the uh, blast door. You'll hear it pick up. You hear it? Because what happens is it goes on ahead and activates the system and allows the air to flow back into the cylinder. All right, right now we're just a little bit, we're showing on the cylinder gauge, we're a little bit below 4,500. So what we want to do is just hit it just a little bit. You can hear it bringing it up. And right there we're at 4,500. Then go on ahead and just hand tight. Shut the pressure gauge off, your fill gauge rather off. Shut off bank one gauge. There, just hand tight. Open up the blast in. Go on ahead and shut the bottle off because you can see it's over 4,500 on the bottle. And we'll shut the cylinder down. All right, now we're going to shut the pressure line coming from the pressure gauge and from the compressor into this line right here. Shut this off. Then all you got to do is bleed. The excessive pressure between your fill and uh, the line, you hear it? And then all you gotta do, you don't need wrenches or anything, just hand tight, take that right off there. Because inside here is a Teflon washer. It expands once air starts flowing. And you don't wanna damage that, you don't wanna blow it. And right there's the Teflon washer. If you ever go on ahead and shut this off and shut your bottle off and you start hearing air leaking, the Teflon washer has been compromised and is, is blown. So we're going to have to go on ahead and take that out and replace it with a new washer. All right now, this cylinder is done for all intentional purposes. So we're going to go on ahead and cap it and put it here. Now your next, your next phase in this is to bleed down the system. You do not want to keep pressure on any of these lines. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open the fill valve. And you can open this fill valve line here and you'll see the pressure going down. Now, you've got these lines closed, but you still have pressure on the regulator. The way to get the pressure off the regulator you see here, decrease or increase. If we're going clockwise, we're increasing the pressure. If we want to reduce the pressure, we go counterclockwise, and you hear it start to bleed off. Hear it? And you can see it as it graduates down, it's going ahead and alleviate the pressure. You don't want to keep pressure on this diaphragm. It's as simple as that. Always remember, we also fill Malabar's uh, SCBA cylinders, and theirs are 2216. They don't have the 4500s like we do. So you have to look at the bottle and look at what pressure it's tested at and rated at before you start filling, or you're gonna blow a burst disc on it. And here's where the burst discs are located. Okay. Throw them a burst disc or a pressure relief disc. And what happens is they're preset. This would set for 5,500. Anything over that, that disc will explode and allow all the air to come out. It's to keep it from overpressurizing the cylinder and causing an explosion. The same way with Malabar's is 2216, but that one will go off at almost 2300. Remember, I don't have any burst disc for a 2216. I have burst disc for 4,500 cylinders, but not 2216. So we have to watch what we're doing. Okay, now, we've rendered the machine safe, everything is off, 
It's all ready to be used again by another crew. And the only thing left to do now. Hey, remember when I told you that it releases the pressure in there? There's a little pressure on that one. Is to come over here and fill out your fill log. Right, the purpose of the fill log, it's mandated by a code of federal regulation, and the state uh, of Florida has adopted the federal regulation that says any time any type of pressure cylinder is filled, it must be logged in as to who filled it and on what date and what if there was any damage or if they cleaned it or inspected it. These stay in, uh, in the office for five years. These have to be maintained for five years. Then after that, they could be disposed of. You also could track, it's a good tracking uh, chart because you could see the dates of the hydro, so it'll give you a heads up a year out which cylinders are due for hydro for the next year, so you can program that into your budget. And that's another reason why we use it.